Hi everyone, welcome to Generic Mental um, Information Part 1 for the year. Um, this session is going live on September the 14th onto our Sussex um, IT web pages, which is obviously where you've been um, to get this. Um, a very warm welcome to everybody. Uh, my name is Fee Brown, I'm going to introduce myself in just a sec. But what I wanted to say first of all was a massive thank you um, from all of us at the Sussex ITE team. Um, this isn't a normal year. Uh, we are incredibly grateful that you've agreed to take a trainee. And um, considering the circumstances that we all find ourselves in, particularly you, um, we've had very few schools pull out on us and, and those that did, they had really good reasons to do so. So the fact that we've got so many of you still with us, we are so grateful, so grateful. Um, our trainees are nervous, obviously, as are you, as are we. Everybody's, um, you know, they're, they're feeling fragile, a little bit fragile, but they're dead keen to go, which is great. Um, and the reason that they're nervous, I guess, is as we were before the summer, we're dealing with unlimited unknowns when it comes to school. Um, but we know that we work with a bunch of mentors that have heart, they care, that's why you're taking somebody, an enormous skill. Um, uh, Welcome back to new mentors who have already, bless them, watched me do an entire session on new mentors. Um, this one is for every mentor, new and experienced, just so that uh, we can, I can guide you through the forms and take you through what's the same this year and what's not the same. So quick introduction for those of you that don't know me. My name is Fee Branner. I'm the new mentoring lead. We've never had one before at Sussex, so I'm the mentoring lead for initial teacher education. Um, my main job, my sort of bread and butter job, is I'm the lead science tutor. So there'll be lots of you um, watching this who are, have been my science mentors for a long time. Um, hello to you guys. And there's lots of you that I haven't met before because you're in all the other wonderful subjects that we have at Sussex. So why do it like this? Well, obviously we can't bring you in. Um, but we also were going to do something like this anyway to separate the wonderful stuff you do with your subject specific tutors that is about history and RE and maths, all of those wonderful things that go on in those sessions and take out the admin because that eats into quite a lot of those sessions and you just end up with like 20 minutes to talk about your subject um, specific stuff and do some professional development and you, you don't want to be doing forms in that so these sessions will continue throughout the year at strategic points to guide you through the next phase of the admin and assessment part of the um, all of our PGC awards so school direct school direct training and the, the classic PGC um, so this is for everybody so this is generic information that's about the forms that's about getting them ready now obviously there are multiple different programs out there so if you are looking after a part-time trainee I mean the forms are the same um, but obviously the year runs a bit differently if you're looking after a school direct salaried trainee then again the forms are all the same but please do be sure for those uh, slightly more unusual courses that we have that have smaller numbers of uh, trainees that you look at the main handbook and the new guidebook for extra information because this would end up being 10 times longer if we did all the quirks for every different little course and obviously any queries contact your uh, subject tutor who will be able to help you with your particular query. So purpose of this session um, I'm going to explain first of all that I'm using something called Capto to record this which is different to the way other colleagues might be doing presentations and the reason I'm using Capto is because I can do this right I can bring up a different file to show you um, that I've got minimized whereas in Panopto which is the classic one you've got to shut it all down and then start again and you can only use PowerPoint so this is it gives me a little bit more sort of functionality a bit more flexibility so what are we going to do in this hopefully very short session um, discuss what the focus of the year is so just like schools we have an action plan now, it's probably quite likely that a bit of our action plan matches with your action plan, which is brilliant, uh, but I'm gonna guide you through that because then you'll know why our trainees are coming in with a particular focus. Um, you're like, oh, why are they talking about that all the time? It's because it's part of our action plan, which is based on how we want to improve each and every year. Um, we'll have a quick discussion about the current pandemic situation. Um, and how we are viewing it from our point of view and how we want our trainees to have as normal an experience as possible. Uh, you're going to get vacancies, you need to fill them. So our guys need to be trained, you know, between you and us, we need to train them so that they can take up your posts 
um, in September or you know slightly before. Um, what we've kept the same, it's really important at this time of year to go, there's a load of stuff we've kept the same, you don't have to get your head around a whole load of new forms, thankfully we've kept the forms all the same, talk about that in a minute, and let you know obviously what we've changed and then guide you through the changes. Um, we'll have a look at the year structure, that stayed the same, which is great. We'll have a look at the new guidebook that I've made for um, secondary mentors and professional tutors. Claire Stennings wrote the professional tutor bit, I've written the mentor bit. Um, We'll have a little chat because it's this time of year, it's September, about getting our trainees settled as best we can into school life. And then we'll talk about the uh, the first assessment form, which for experienced mentors will know is called the PPPA, Professional Practice Profile A. All right, so moving swiftly on. Um, so our focus this year in ITE, these are our, there's one, two, three, four, five parts to our action plan, and one of them includes you. So our first bit that will affect you with um, the way that the trainees are talking about certain issues, the way that they want to track certain pupils, they will want to teach certain groups of pupils is the first part of the action plan to promote equality, diversity and inclusion. And I'm certain that every single one of you has that on their action plan for school as well. So. In the past, we've, um, you know, they need to have experience of EAL, they need to have professional studies of EAL, uh, they need to be aware of the equality and diversity policies in school. We need to ramp that up this year. Um, and when we talk about timetable, I think we should be thinking about how we choreograph timetables to enable the trainees to teach pupils with EAL. So be mindful of that when you're planning their timetable to try and have the most diverse group of pupils that they can within um, their teaching week. Um, we do need trainees to be better prepared to talk about their curriculum and why their curriculum looks the way it does. All of us have different curricula, yeah? So the one in science, we've got a, um, an obsession, I was gonna say. Uh, we, we need to do uh, loads of stuff about practical. DT is about practical. Uh, but those of you teaching English and history and RE and all the other subjects, it's different for you. The way you view curriculum is different. So we would like conversations to be happening about curriculum. So if you could weave that into induction would be great or into mentor sessions to unpick why do we teach it like that? Why is that important for our curriculum? That would be great if you could do that. Um, we obviously need to move with the times and hence doing a session like this, which is incredibly uncomfortable for me, I will admit. Um, we need our trainees to get used to this too. They've got to get used to face-to-face -to -face teaching and having an online presence with their teaching as well. A lot of your schools won't be marking books this term, I've heard, but each and every one of you will be different. I mean, I, we work in Brighton and Hove. There's nine secondary schools. Every single secondary school is doing it differently. And you'll have a chance to talk about that more in your subject-specific sessions, and we want to talk about it. We want to know where you all are so that we can help the trainees, but we've got to get them better with online systems um, and videoing themselves. So, you know, hopefully there'll be more directed tasks from all of our colleagues about getting them used to doing this awkwardness. Um, and Because we're also used to face-to-face, -face, aren't we? This is all very strange. Um, our communication with you, we want to improve. I think we're always pretty good, actually, but we can always be better. So the first beginning is to appoint somebody to look after mentors as part of their role, to do the training. So you've got one person doing the training. Uh, one person to contact if you've got, excuse me, queries about the mentoring role, um, but obviously contact your subject specific people as well. But about this kind of stuff, contact me. And we want to make sure that you're as happy as you can be and are as informed as you could be about our courses. So we, we, we invite feedback, okay? So do let us know how we're getting on, especially me, I invite feedback. Um, we also have been um, trying desperately over the last few years to get equity of workload across cohorts. It's, they're all different. Each cohort is unique. They've got their own unique challenges. So saying they're all going to be the same is, is folly. It's nonsense. But we want to make sure they've got the same appropriate hours of tasks each so that one cohort doesn't have like one hour a term and some other cohort has 20 hours a term. So we're looking at equity across those. It doesn't really affect you too much, to be honest. It affects us. So what's the same as last year? This is always the, yeah, it's the same. Um, all the forms are the same. Every single form is the same. So yeah, that's Iron. Uh, there's PPPA as usual, the one that's done right at the beginning, um, just before October half term. And I'll guide you through that one, obviously, in a sec. 
um, all the way through to the PPP, all the same. Ob observation forms are the same, the lesson plans are all the same, the assignments are the same, so the big written one is the same, and so is the RPK. Uh, most of the tutors are exactly the same. I'll discuss some of the changes later on. We've got some really sad retirements to discuss, um, so I'll talk to you in the next slide. Uh, we've still got Claire Stevens, our brilliant partnership administrator. She's the same doing that unbelievable job that she does. Um, the structure of the year is the same as so are the deadlines, apart from the fact you know, that we're a year later. Everything looks great, which from a tutor's point of view is a huge relief, and I'm sure it is for you too. And there's the normal website to go and have a look at the forms, look at the observation form, lesson observation form. It's all nice and tidy, um, and I'll explain why in a sec. So, new partnership team. Um, uh, Sally Dudley, uh, sterling work in partnership for, for years and years and years. She's moving on to do a larger recruitment role within the department. So our new team is Claire Stenning, who's our secondary lead, she's now in charge of partnership. Annette Batifant, she is helping with partnership, doing stuff with professional tutors, so not necessarily applicable to you, unless you teach history, in which case you'll meet her there. And I'm doing the mentoring, right? So I'm looking after the, the mentoring programme for the year. We've got some new tutors in. There's no more Cosmopolitans, which is a group, uh, for those of you that don't know, that put all our smaller subjects together and they were taught together. We've now got enough trainees that we can break them all up and they can have their own dedicated tutor. So we've got a new business studies tutor. We've got um, the psychology tutor is the same, but they're not within Cosmos. Um, RE tutor, um, although she started last year, um, they're on the list in the handbook. So I quickly flicky flicky now and just show you there's the list of all the tutors so that you can um, find their email address. And then if there isn't a phone number, I'm afraid it's because currently they don't have a phone. So um, ring one of the rest of us or email is by far the best way to get hold of a tutor anyway. Uh, the phone's always a bit of a nightmare because we're quite often off and about. And at the moment, we're not really sp supposed to be working on campus in our offices unless we have to. So email's the best way to get hold of us. Um, sadly, Duncan and Rob um, are retiring. Jammy jam jams. Um, it's incredibly sad, but I think probably pretty great for them. So they're retiring and taking their place is Stella Knight for music and um, Andy Lowe for geography. So we thank them, our colleagues very much for doing that. But uh, really sad not to have a proper do to say goodbye to Duncan or Rob. Um, we've got a brand new guidebook. Let's flick that up again. So here it is in all its glory. This is what it looks like. So it's got this pretty cover. Um, and that's new for you just for mentors and a section for professional tutors. These sessions are like tag-ons really to be able to watch and listen to, but everything you need now is in that guidebook and it's not written like the normal handbook. So it's not in university speak. I've written it um, in the same style that I've written my science handbook. So hopefully it's useful to you. Um, what's new is no more face-to-face -face mental meetings, no more face-to-face -face new mental training. It's all going to be like this through a screen, but not always the same. <coughs> so this is pre-recorded going live onto the website onto the 14th of September, but your mentor specific meetings with your subject tutors will be synchronous via Zoom. So they'll be in touch with you this week, so the week of the 14th of September, um, to discuss a, um, the Zoom link. I'll show you the times in a sec. Um, because we've got that one here. Uh, there will be more inputs throughout the year, much more inputs. They'll be pre-recorded like this and popped onto the website and we'll email you to let you know that they are there. Um, and obviously what's new this year is a need to be flexible from us, from you, from everybody involved in teacher training, teacher education, because we don't know what's ahead of us, do we? I mean, I'm recording this on the Wednesday that they're talking about, they're changing the groups again, about who can meet indoors and outdoors. So we've got to be responsive, we've got to be quick. And I'm talking about us here, not you. That's our job. Um, so, okay, next one. Um, so, leading on from the, the crazy times that we find ourselves in, you were all amazing when we had to go into lockdown last year. Um, you responded really quickly. You looked after a load of our trainees. A load of them carried on teaching, but because you were there to continue to help them. So a huge thank you for that. Now this year, we don't want things to just stop. They can't stop. We have to train them. So our hope is that everything will carry on as usual, that they'll keep schools open, close everything else to keep schools open. So they keep schools open, 
they will gradually start to teach just as usual and everything will carry on as normal. That's our hope, isn't it, for all of us. So we want them to carry on teaching as we would do any other time. So however you can do that within your school rules, we want them to teach. They will be on campus on Fridays. OK, obviously, if we need to change that, we will change that. But at the moment, that's what we're doing. They're all wearing masks. They're all at a, a safe distance. Um, we really hope that we will find a way to observe our trainees. We hope we'll be allowed into school. Um, but if we're not, I'm just going to delete that, sorry. Um, but if we're not allowed to go into school, then we will do it via video in some way, either pre-recorded or something live on a GoPro or something like that. We'll find a way. Um, each trainee obviously has their own dedicated tutor. So we know that there are they may be may be difficult times ahead and we're going to be behind them every step of the way um, to deal with their school and their own unique experience because not not every school will do the same thing they're already doing wildly different things so we'll be behind them now this one is important every lesson observation matters if we're not going to be in or we're going to be in sporadically throughout the year whatever we write has to be the best best we can do so uh, where some colleagues have got used to just doing bits on bits of paper, I recommend that maybe we do a lot more on the formal form this year, that they're more verbose, that we get more detail on there. Because if we then close for however long, then they have got some physical evidence that they can use towards the standards. So lesson observations are uh, they're primo this year. We've got to make sure that we're, we're getting those in super, super detail. OK, so the training year. OK, so what does it look like? It looks the same. So um, here's our normal uh, PGCE one. Um, there's induction as usual. Let me get my little pen because that makes life a bit easier. So induction as usual. They come into you there. Friday, 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 Friday. So the same pattern as we always have, which is marvellous. Um, PPPA. Can I do this? There we go. PPPA there. That's great, isn't it? Um, PPPA, and then obviously they are starting to work on their assignment here. They're doing um, proposals, thinking about their literature, back in with you. Now, normally we would ask you to make sure that they've done a lesson, a full lesson that week before half term, so that they can reflect on it and start planning the week after. Now, if because we've shunted induction a week later to give everyone in school a chance to settle before we invade you, if you think that's too tight, then don't worry, get them to teach it after half term, that's fine. We don't want it to wait another week though, that's no good. Okay, so we don't want that week of the 9th of November, that's too late to start teaching. Because we're still hoping that we'll get to eight hours a week by Christmas, hoping. But every single trainee is in a unique situation within your unique school. I say unique a lot, right? So don't worry about that. But just let us know. I mean, if they're still on three around here, that's not good, is it? Yeah. So we're moving towards eight if we can, but flexible approach for every single trainee in every school. Support plan deadline is where you'd think it would be. So once they've taught their first couple of lessons, which is why they need to teach as soon as they come back after October half term, let's get that support plan done if you don't think things are going smoothly, all right? Don't worry about doing a support plan, it's fine. It's called a support plan, yeah? So if it's uh, professionalism, we should have picked it up at PPPA point. So if they're not arriving on time, We'll talk about this as well in a bit because we'll go through the PPPA. So alert us to it there. Don't err on the side of, oh, I'm sure it'll be all right. Let's not do that this year. Let's make sure that we're telling the truth. Yeah, and we're. I know we all want to be really positive and it's great that we all want to be positive, but we also don't want to let them think that everything's fine when it might not be. And then it hits them like a brick when we get here in November. So early alert is better than later. So support plan, PPPB. Christmas, doing their literature review, it's a really tight spot for them, they're tired. Um, we know that this dark, dark, dark bit here in January is tricky. <coughs> so we've got to keep them going through there and then support plan and so on for the year. And I'll be coming back to this later on in generic sessions through the year, but the year looks exactly the same as it always does, okay? So every Friday at uni um, and then in second placement, much less yeah so we plan obviously our timetables for placement one don't have a friday on them but you do have a friday on them for placement two 
same assignments there's the rpk and our enrichment week at the end really nothing has changed deadlines have only changed because it's a year later apk comes in the same time it's great i love it when everything stays the same it makes life so much easier okay uh, school direct salaried and school direct tuition um again it's the same routine as usual you've got your second placement contrasting emphasize the word contrasting placement where they really do need to go somewhere really different to hone their skills all right but that's the only thing that changes about our course apart from you know school direct salaries having their own uh, timetable rules okay deadlines are all exactly the same okay now here's something new for this year this is the guidebook um written for mentors and professional tutors i'll just scan you through it's got a detailed contents where you can just click and it will take you to the right spot so it shows you everything that you need to take you through the year so there's a bit about the roles and responsibilities of everybody <coughs> um, how we can get ready for placements what their entitlement is designing their timetables what induction should look like in school, how to run your mental meetings, etc. It's all in there this year. So hopefully you only need to go to the main IT handbook if there's a real problem. So for support plans and uh, course for concerns and those kind of issues, mentors really only need to look at that. The trainees need to read the main handbook because that's got all about their assignments in. So it's important for them. So that's the guidebook. Please do read it um and um give me some feedback if you think there's stuff that i've missed i'd really appreciate that uh, obviously the main ITE handbook it's also on the partnership pages um oh, i got that loaded i don't know if i got that loaded but you can click on that you know how to work it and that's where all the forms are um and actually oh, i will show you the partnership page here we go so um, this is our partnership page that you just honestly just put ITE partnership in the little um, lollipop thing and you get in there straight away. Our handbooks for every subject are in the bit that's called handbooks. They're lovely and colourful this year. They're wonderful. I really like them. Uh, we've got things like mission statement. There's all your contacts that you might need, although they're in the handbook as well. There's our induction programme in there. And this is the one that's particularly for us where these sessions will go onto this page once I finish them and the slides will go up there. So this will fill during the year, um, so you don't start off with too much information. Um, and then there's the forms. So all the PPPs, um, all the different lesson plans, the weekly observation report, etc. they're all on there for you. Okay, so how do we get them settled? Now, I wonder if it might be a bit trickier this year. They certainly seem very keen um, everyone, all, all the colleagues that I've spoken to have said they're very keen. I think a lot of people are really pleased to have um, something steady going on. Uh, one of my trainees, he's been a driving instructor. Um, he's a physicist who's been working as a driving instructor. And sure, he's really happy to be here. Uh, one guy has been managing bars, um, also a physics graduate. Um, and they're just really happy to have something something meaningful to do as well. They were so excited the first day. But I think the nerves will start to creep in. Three weeks of induction is a long time. You know, normally two weeks and they're in. And it's school that gives them, you know, the, the mass of excitement, but also maybe the most of anxiety. So um, what would be really nice is, so you're watching this the week of the 14th. Next week, week of the 21st of September, is um, when you'll have your subject specific session and some of them are a bit late they're on a Thursday so it'd be really good if we could email the trainee so we'll make sure that tutors get you the email addresses so email the trainee and just calm them down ready for the beginning of term ready for their placement just let them know dress code what time to arrive maybe a quick zoom chat but only if you've got time no pressure on that one um, and just reassure them about what the arrangements are for their first day that's normally where they get really concerned you know they say i don't know what time i need to be in school i don't know what to wear no one's told me anything it always ends up okay but it can give them a really worrying weekend if we don't let them know what's going on so if you can email them the week before that'd be grand um, managing induction, I'm gonna, I've got this word nervous on too many times maybe now, um, there's a list in the guidebook. Now in the past, induction has very much been and still is the realm of the professional tutor. They organise induction, hasn't got much to do with the mentor, um, but actually as a mentor it'd be really good if you could just keep an eye 
on their induction and make sure that you've got a copy of their timetable for induction and where they're supposed to be. You might want to add some stuff in if you notice there's a slot that's empty um, and just get them busy. I mean, they're exhausted in induction because it's just information overload. But there's things like last year, I noticed there were some gaps that some people didn't have health and safety until like week four. So that really needs to be in the first few days. You, we can't have them stuck inside when there's a fire drill because they don't know what to do. Um, access to data is really important. So please do check the handbook um, to see if there's stuff um, that you can just double check for them. I really appreciate that. Timetable design, same as always. Um, but maybe we need to think about this in a slightly different way because of the pandemic. So I doubt you're gonna wanna give your 11 up to you but maybe you aren't going to want to do that are there classes that are slightly easier for them to deal with if we get locked down and they're doing remote learning so just thinking ahead a little bit um, the other thing uh, remember it has to be a mix of key stage three and key stage four year nine is not key stage four it isn't it has to be something in key stage four um, they have to teach across two key stages so some of you might be key stage four and post 16 um, for most of us it's key stage three and key stage four um, Please avoid too many split classes. Um, there was a timetable a few years ago, I mentioned the new mentor training, where a trainee had 12 different staff members over the two weeks. There's no way that you can do that. There's just no way. It's impossible. Um, so please be mindful of that for them. Um, normal build up of lessons, one before or after half term, like I mentioned, building up to our normal eight before Christmas, if we can. Six before Christmas, that's fine. Um, do plan for them doing observation. We don't want, if they're allowed to go into someone else's class, obviously we've got to have that caveat. We don't want them sitting there in the staff room, not doing anything where they could be observing colleagues and learning so much more, okay? They've got to be in a form group, remember? School direct salaried, please make sure you read the handbook and the main ITE handbook. So the mentor guidebook and the main ITE handbook because the rules are different for school direct salaried because they're employed by you they're not um, by us, okay, so it's totally different rules. Right, so remember that uh, mental meetings, the same as always, please have them every single week. Um, don't change their slot. It really worries them when you change the slot. If you need to move it, that's fine, but try not to. Um, it's much better for them if they know exactly when they can talk to you. If you keep moving it, they're just gonna find you at other periods of the day. So you can manage them their, their neediness much better if you keep it to the same slot each week. And remember say, you know, get me later, we've got our mental meeting on Thursday, whatever it is. They're still filling in the tracker as usual. Remember you don't have access to all the bits of the tracker because it's their private document between us and them. But the bit that they fill in for their assessments, for the PPPs, is a bit that you will need to see. And you shouldn't fill it in unless you've seen that bit. Those PPPs are evidence driven, which I'll chat a bit more about in the end. So, uh, how to get them teaching, uh, new mentors. We've sort of talked about that in the previous session to our experienced colleagues. Um, it might be slightly different this year because they might not be allowed to ro roam around the room being a teaching assistant. So think about how they're able to get involved without moving around. So they might need to have to leap from observation to co-planning, starter plenary, running a demonstration, doing a bit of reading at the front, whatever you want them to do. If you th don't think they're ready to move, from observation straight to up the front. Get them designing some resources. Can they design a worksheet that you deliver? Can they sort out your PowerPoint slides and you deliver them? And then it can observe what their stuff looks like from the other side, which is a really good method, you know, where they just feed into your teaching and then you show them what it looks like. But no sink or swim, we can't have that. Nobody, oh, just pull the plaster off, get teaching, that's what happened to me. We don't want that doesn't go well they need to have time to reflect on their practice okay so getting them teaching any problems you let us know straight away if they're reluctant to get up there if they seem to be stuck in a corner just contact your subject tutor and they'll be on it straight away so um end of phase meetings so you will have one just before october half term so the pppa uh, which is due on the 23rd of October, you'll have your end of phase meeting the week before or at the beginning of that week, because it's all a bit tight, isn't it? We're like a week short this year. Um, they will need to show you the bit of the tracker 
that's got their evidence in. Don't fill in a form until you've seen some evidence, okay? We've had some uh, assessments done in the past where I look at the assessment from the mentor and then I look at the tracker and there's nothing in the tracker. How could you have filled this in? And the trainee's been given very good in everything, which is no good, okay? We, we don't want that. You need to see their evidence for it. Um, as I said earlier, observations are so important this year that we get those detailed and we get them promptly back to them. Don't be scared to just give it back live, please. Don't take it away and type it up. It's just wasting your time. Trust your judgment, hand it over, okay? But as usual, one of our focuses, um, which it, it is for every IT department around the country, to be honest, is specific and focused feedback. Now, I'll do more on this in the next generic training. Once everyone's had a chance to get used to the forms and they've got used to their trainee, um, they'll be gathering different bits from the trackers to um to show you some good practice that we're seeing around the different cohorts so for now just focus on what are they doing well and be really clear you did this well you did that well you did this well. so don't change those bits those bits are great however we've got to work on this and make sure in these early observations that they are um geared to the stage that they're at they are new um, they're just learning to stand up and not be so nervous that they fall over so just make sure that we're a little bit kind about how they come across in those first ones um so we always want you to co-plan we have always wanted you to co-plan um and we do want you to continue um, to plan. So in a normal year, we want them to teach one lesson before October. October. We explained that that's flexible. You need to co-plan with them those first lessons to guide them. Please remember that all their lesson plans need to be given to you in advance. Okay, always, always, always in advance. Um, 24 hours is ideal. 48 is okay. It's a bit stressful. 72 is, is just punishing, really. They just can't manage it. It's three days away I don't think anyone can really get their, their stuff sorted that early so their first lessons guide them through them plan them with them show them the scheme of work remember they need to be more inventive and adaptive than just following a scheme of work they need to do their own thing okay okay we're nearly done filling in the first assessment so the PPPA is due on the 23rd you have your end of phase meeting with them either the beginning of that week or the week before it looks the same as it did last year, year before. You, This bit gets filled in, the guff at the, the top, subject, mentor, all the rest of it. Please don't forget to tick, right? Don't forget to tick the box. We hope it's passed. If you want to tick fail, you have to have contacted us before. Please don't just tick fail and send it in because, um, especially for PPPA, I mean, that would just be horrendous. I mean, what have they done? Um, but we can't do that. So, um, And when we get onto PPPB, you would have had to have done a support plan in order to make that happen. Um, these are trainee reflections that you must read before you fill your bit in. They will do that based on their tracker. If the tracker is empty, they cannot fill this in. So ask to see their tracker bit where they've been filling in their evidence, okay? Um, final part of the PPBA. Now, because this is the A and not later on, we're not commenting on teaching, so we don't have the different strengths and targets boxes. It's one box about how have they settled in. Um, so if you can still do it as three, th three, ooh, mouth's going with three strengths and three targets, that's grand, but it can just be pros about how they've been and getting on because they might not have done anything that needs a target right now. So um, go ahead and write something in there. Maybe we start with a positive and then with a positive, you know, the, the sandwich that we're talking about, okay? You fill it in, get it to your professional tutor, they tick the pass, hopefully, and send it back to us. And it's the tiny little email down there, ite at sussex.ac.uk. Please don't send them all to me. I don't want, was it 300 and something uh, PPPAs? They go to that email um, down there. Okay, I'm going to get my little draw thing in, emphasise that. Hang on, it's down there, ite at sussex.ac.uk. Uh, okay, send it to that. Okay, so um, hopefully that's it. Um, if you've got loads of extra questions, then I probably haven't done enough, but I didn't want to make it really long. Your subject specific sessions next week will just be about your subject, okay? Um, they start next week, so the week of the 21st. The dates are on here. If they change, I'm sure your tutor will, well, they'll have to let you know. They're going to send you the Zoom invite. So when we've, when, at the moment, I'm sitting here doing this on Wednesday, uh, the 9th. Uh, we don't have every school confirmed. 
I hope by next Monday we will. And then I can get the mentor emails out to our subject tutors and they can contact you and keep in touch. And they'll send you the Zoom invite. The week of the 16th of November, I'll do another one of these. It'll be more focused on observation technique, on uh, maybe mental minutes when we've had a look to see what the trackers look like and preparing them for the PPPB, okay? The week of the 23rd is your next subject specific one and then the B is due on uh, December the 18th. And I think that's it for now. I hope that's it for now. Um, I will make sure that my email is on here, uh, which currently it's not, but I will make sure that it is so that you can contact me directly. Uh, these, this session has gone on the web page where all the other, other information will go on for all mentors during the year. So thanks ever, ever so much for listening. Um, and thank you so much for being a mentor with us this year. I, I don't think you can appreciate how much we value it. Um, we hate getting emails at this time of year where schools pull out on us. We do understand it, but obviously it makes your heart sink. So thank you so much for being with us. And let's hope this is a really good year. Okay, take care, everybody. Thank you ever so much. And I hope to see you face to face soon.